Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome today to the Discriminating Gamers. Say, do you know the names of the three greatest Soviet generals? December, January, and February. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Undaunted Stalingrad from Osprey Games. We'll get back to the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. Undaunted Stalingrad from Osprey Games is a campaign game based on the Undaunted system that we all know and love. Now this system, this game, of course, it uh, the basic gameplay is very similar. If you played the other Undaunted games, you'll know the basics here of the deck building system, the initiative, and playing the cards uh, for their effects and moving your units and attacking with your units, etc., etc., on the board. I'm not going to get into that so much because I have done, I have reviewed previous Undaunted games on this channel, but rather we're going to Kind of focus here on the campaign aspects and what makes this game a little bit different. In Undaunted Stalingrad, uh, one player takes on the role of the Wehrmacht and the other the Red Army as they battle in Stalingrad in late 1942 and early 1943. Now what's going to happen here is, uh, as I say, you have your, your decks, you have your supply cards, and in each scenario you're going to have kind of a basic number of a kind of a core deck that you're going to play with um, that has, you know, your your uh, infantry and you know, your riflemen, that is to say, your scouts, uh, uh, machine gunners, platoon leaders, etc., etc. And you're going to go ahead, squad leaders, you're going to go ahead and use those as your kind of your basic play. But then as you as the game evolves, you're going to bring in different cards uh, or different units that are going to be used by those different cards and some other bells and whistles along the way. But critically here too, uh, once you play through a scenario, uh, you're going to go ahead and refer to kind of the, the game state, essentially, because it, it branches off. And you go, depending on who wins and who loses, you're going to have these different kind of, of stories that play out. Now, here's the thing. Um, if you are playing the game and you lose, say, a rifleman, then uh, you're going to have to go ahead at the end of the at the end of the scenario. You're going to shuffle and you're going to kind of draw for your permanent casualties. Some of the people that are casualties will be out of the game, and there's a, a compartment in your personal um, uh, sides uh, cards where you put game cards that are just out of the game. And then you're going to have to draw a reserve card. Now the reserve cards are not as good. They've got problems. Maybe they can't move, maybe they're limited in their attacking range or things like that, but your reserves are just not as good as your basic cards. But also, too, the flip side is some of your uh, units may perform very well. You can go ahead and actually upgrade them to superior units that give them superior abilities in the coming scenarios. Now, also, too, there'll be some other bells and whistles. You can score points, of course, by taking the objectives, but maybe some units that, that are able to score points, they can go ahead, they can uh, gain certain advantages and gain points that way as well. Uh, the tiles the the, the, the the tiles that you're constructing are going to be altered over the course of the game, so the, so the tiles you start with aren't necessarily the ones that are going to, to arrive later, because you have kind of transform tiles, the, the battles transform the city. The tiles themselves, too, they also have, some of them have buildings, meaning um, the, the cover value, the regular cover value is only active if you're fighting units in that same uh, tile. But units from outside that don't have to just take into effect the regular cover value. They also have to take into effect the building cover value. So it's much harder to hit uh, units that are kind of entrenched in buildings. Now also too, there's some other key differences. You don't have spawn points per se. Essentially new units can spawn next to riflemen. And then critically in the other games of Undaunted, whenever all of your cards 
have been taken out of your hand and out of your discard pile and out of your deck and there's no more in the supply, then that unit was removed. Here, the unit isn't removed, it is routed. You place a kind of a white banner on it, uh, it can be forced back, but it's routed. It's not dead per se, it's just not currently active until you can get more cards in there. And if you can't, that's fine. It still remains like that until the end of the scenario. So you're going through, you're playing each game of Undaunted. Uh, when you figure out who wins or who loses at the end of the game, you have to go through these step, campaign steps to figure out you know, what reserves are, are uh, coming in, what units are being upgraded, and uh, where essentially what, how the game state is going to evolve. But you and your friends are going to go ahead and play through this until you reach the end of the campaign scenario, and that way you will determine the winner of Undaunted Stalingrad. Now, I have only played the first few missions here. I haven't played them all. I got this a while back, and uh, Kim um, Kim was over here last week, and we started playing it. And I actually held on to it for a while because I wanted to play it with her. And um, unfortunately, we live in different towns, so it'll be a while before we can hook up again to, uh, to, to continue playing it. Um, so, so just bear this in mind. I've only played the first few scenarios. And I got to tell you, I'm already in love with this game. This, I, because I'm such a big fan of Undaunted uh, Normandy and North Africa the, and, and the Reinforcements Pack. Um, I'm such a big fan of, of the Undaunted games. And then to play this one here that's uh, evolving. And what's cool here is, yes, it's a campaign game. And I'm not, uh, the, usually I'm not the biggest fan of campaign games. I'll make an exception here because it's, it's, it's presented in such an easy way. And again, my, my big problem is with the campaign game is it's, it, I got to wait for Kim. Now, this is much better than like a multiple multiple campaign game where you got like four or five players and you got to do schedules and stuff. And that's why I hate campaign games. But with two players, it's going to be a lot easier. I just got to wait until Kim and I can, can get together again. But it's so much fun. I freaking love this game. Kim loves this game as well. We both just really had a ball with Undaunted Stalingrad. Um, because again, you get this, this, you know, every game of like Undaunted Normandy and North Africa, they tell the story within the, within the scenario. And here you get to tell this larger story within the, within the campaign, which is so freaking cool and so fun. And to see how it all evolves, as I say, really enjoy it. Um, I can't, I, this is one of those games where I guess the only negative thing I have to say is, um, because it's a campaign, there's going to be some scheduling issues. That's like it. Other than that, I, I haven't found anything in here so far that to, to complain about. This is a great game. This is one of the greatest games of 2022. I'm just sad I'm just getting to play it here now. I freaking love this game. It's amazing. And if it can, if it can maintain this feeling of fun that it's given me just in the first few episodes, this could go on to become I, I, potentially a top 10 game of all time. A little early to make that distinction, but, you know, ask me again in, in a few months when I've finished it, if I think it is. And maybe I'm hoping to, maybe Kim and I can do some kind of an overview of it, or maybe I can, I don't know, we'll see, when, when I do finish it, because I do want to talk about it more. But I just, I wanted to get it out here and talk about my experiences so far, because this is a phenomenal game. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, Dave Thompson knocks it out of the park once again. Great game. A recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Undaunted Stalingrad is 100% buy it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. And I also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson, PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history, fun things like that. I'm currently posting my lectures on World War II on that channel. So please check that out if that's something that interests you, and please subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. And I also ask you to please leave a thumb to this video on Board Game Geek. That'll also helps us a lot as well. You know, ladies and gentlemen, during World War II, my grandpa actually got shot, but the bullet hit some coins in his pocket. It was his life savings. I really do.